Thank you. Well, I'm going to speak now because I feel compelled to, and I will call on the others um, who would like to speak. But I've been taken aback by statements made about the amendments to the Omnibus Corrections Bill by some of my colleagues. I feel the need to review history and reframe the discussion. When I first joined the County Council in 2018, one of the first issues presented to me was a large and complicated rewrite of our zoning ordinance. I felt overwhelmed by having to immediately take on such an important piece of legislation that hadn't been updated in decades and that would have an impact on our county for years to come. I relied on my more senior colleagues for advice and counsel, and over time, I came to depend on Tom Dernoga more than anyone else for this issue. He convinced me that there was too much in it that we didn't understand yet, and we should slow it down. Frankly, his views made me distrust the whole thing. Over time, and with a lot of pressure by other colleagues in the planning department, I was convinced that what we were doing was simply consolidating many zones into a manageable number and that properties would get a zone that most closely matched what they'd had before. It turns out that isn't exactly what we did. We passed a bill that did many good things, but it didn't simply do anything. I heard from property owners that had businesses they'd invested their money and lives in that would become non-conforming under the new ordinance. I heard from developers who were stymied by incompatible directives, and I was reassured all along that the plan had always been to work out the kinks and amend the ordinance so that it worked better for everyone. Councilmember Denoga, to his credit, has thrown himself into this omnibus corrections bill, and that process of working with the planning department on it has led him to fully embrace it. He's changed his position from one of critic to cheerleader, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just have not followed him. What I see are 285 pages of amendments. And this is the third omnibus corrective bill under consideration since the original approval of the new ordinance in 2018. It shows me that the original bill had and still has many flaws. As a matter of fact, I'm convinced that there are more corrections that still be made, particularly in the area of townhouse and mixed-use development. We want this zoning ordinance to live up to the promise that was made to the council and to me in 2018. As for the proposed two years extension to access the prior ordinance, I remind you that even the planning department stated last Thursday that they thought a six-month extension to use the old ordinance was a good idea. By contrast, what I'm hearing from people who have sent me what is essentially ex parte communication is that they want no extension. Based on my experience and service on the council, these comments are misguided. To me, they are listening to and believing people who either don't know better or don't want them to know better. What's more, I'm hearing there are people with upset with how the P head committee meeting went last week. They were upset because they believed we did not want to hear from them, which is not true. My position and that of my colleagues was that they speak at the appropriate time, which according to our rules was not during the time that the committee was in debate. The public should have been allowed to speak first. That would have given us an opportunity to hear your comments before our debate began. Instead, a council member who is not on the P head committee was allowed to speak, thus starting the floor debate. This was disappointing, but I was also disappointed for another reason. I've communicated with my colleagues about decorum and the importance of following our council rules. As far as those who think it was wrong to put amendments forward without the public speaking first, you apparently missed December 22 and January 23. CR 3, 2023, introduced and adopted on December 12, 2022. CR 4, 2023, introduced and adopted on December 12, 2022. CR 5, 2023, introduced and adopted on December 12, 2022. CB 12, CB 13, CB 14, CB 15, CB 16, 17, and 18, all 
passed the presentation stage and went straight to introduction on December 12, 2022, which means there was no opportunity for substantive edits prior to public hearing. The people sending me emails that clearly were copied from some other document did not raise any alarms when these resolutions were introduced and passed in the same day that year. I'm not blaming anyone for that. I voted for them myself. It's surprising you thought it was okay then and terrible now. It might be helpful if you ask more questions rather than believing every email you receive, even from someone you like and trust. The resolution I'm putting forward, CR 22 2024, will keep the current zoning ordinance available for use for two years past its current expiration date of April 1st, 2024. Obviously, there isn't sufficient time to pass it as a bill, but as you know, it was voted on favorably as an amendment to CB 15 2024 MP head last Thursday. Therefore, since the intent is clear that it be part of the omnibus corrections bill, and that it will pass, but not before April 1st, I'm putting it forward as a resolution. In the same vein, the subdivision resolution and bill will temporarily extend access to prior regulations as it has the same deadlines. Again, we want to get this massive zoning ordinance right. It is clear it will take more time to get it where it needs to be. For my newer colleagues, I think knowing more of the background and history will help frame this discussion for you. For the concerned public, remember, it wasn't long ago that the very cheer cheerleaders for the new ordinance today were the naysayers yesterday. Today, I'm ne neither a cheerleader nor a naysayer anymore. I recognize the complexity of what we're doing and the imperative that we get it right. I have to depend on my own knowledge and experience, and when someone else's viewpoint on the dais is different, I won't vilify them. I hope they take the time to learn and agree that anything that needed 285 pages of amendments most likely needs a little more time to get it right, and we must. In the meanwhile, the old ordinance will still be there to bridge the gaps, and I believe that over the next two years, you will see a greater embrace of the new ordinance. Right now, 40% of the projects are using the new ordinance, and 60% are using the old one. During a time of economic upheaval around the globe and in our county, it only makes sense to take a more gradual approach.